an actor. He was like me. He came in and put on his makeup and did his thing. <coughs> he just happened to be a genius. He was essentially a clown. But he was also somebody who spoke for people who couldn't speak for themselves. Chaplin the man. Chaplin the star. Chaplin the worldwide phenomenon. Chaplin the film gives us a better understanding of all of these. But the best way to fully appreciate the legacy of Charles Spencer Chaplin is through his films. The gems, large and small, that rock the world with laughter. The flickering images of comic genius. In 1917, Charlie Chaplin, 26 years old and already the biggest star in movies, signed a contract with the Mutual Film Company to produce and star in 12 motion pictures, one per month. For his services, Chaplin was paid $670,000, making him the highest paid individual in the world. The 12 Mutual Films are today regarded as the pinnacle of Chaplin's early career. Though not as ambitious or emotionally charged as much of his later work, they show Chaplin at the peak of his comic form. In The Adventurer, Charlie plays an escaped convict who eludes the cops and crashes a society party disguised as a rich playboy. As a physical comedian, Chaplin had to be a superb athlete. His early days with Max Sennett didn't hurt either when it came to chase sequences like these. What made Chaplin unique, however, was his ability to turn physical comedy from the merely frantic to the sublime. One can only imagine the hours of rehearsal it took to achieve the split-second timing of this relatively simple gag. As in so many of his great comic sequences, the action isn't directed so much as it's choreographed. In this scene, Charlie, attempting to woo leading lady Edna Proviance, accidentally drops a scoop of ice cream down the front of his pants. Years later, Chaplin himself wrote about this scene and how it typified his comedy. I always aim for economy of means, he wrote. When one incident can get two big separate laughs, it is much better than two individual incidents. The first laugh comes at my embarrassment over my own predicament. The second, and the much greater one, came when the ice cream landed on the woman's neck. Only one incident had been used, but it got two people into trouble. It's almost like you see the way he planned the scene out and then set it up physically so that one thing, everything informed the next thing. It was very mathematical yet spontaneous, you know. He seemed to be able to arrive at that formula very, um, very easily. Chaplin's physical skills were nowhere more in evidence than The Rink, also from the same year. Somehow it's no surprise that he is so talented a roller skater. He had performed a similar act during his English vaudeville days. But the wonder, as always, is how he translates those skills into comedy. In this scene, it almost appears he's using trick photography or some kind of pulley system to keep bouncing to his feet. It is, however, only Chaplin. Olivier said he was probably the greatest actor of all time. Uh, Diaghilev described him as the greatest ballet dancer who was not a ballet dancer. He had extraordinary magic whenever he appeared. That sense of grace of a dancer who's not a dancer is the key to the character of Chaplin's Little Tramp. Whether he's a vagabond or a convict or a lowly waiter, he brings a comic elegance to everything he does, from mixing a cocktail to carving a chicken to the simple and endlessly imitated Chaplin Walk. Charlie Chaplin, I suppose, is the most famous comedian in history, not just movie history, but all history. And I suppose that he created the most universally known, recognized, loved figure of a fictional human being. Charlie's Little Tramp is known everywhere, he's loved everywhere, and he's understood everywhere. It doesn't matter if it's in, in India or China or Japan, they understand that tramp. Another of the mutual films, The Immigrant, provides an interesting insight into the way Chaplin's creativity worked. When filming started, Chaplin knew only that he wanted to do a story set in a restaurant. 
The set was built, and he went about devising a series of gags. The waiter asking him to remove his hat. <laughs> Scalding himself with a mouthful of beans. And finally meeting Edna as a long-lost friend. But still no story. What Chaplin then asked himself was, how did he and the girl first get to know each other? The answer when it came meant that Chaplin had to throw out most of the footage already shot and start over. They met as immigrants on a ship sailing to America. More sets, more gags. The result, however, is a perfectly crafted two-act comedy. The first on a ship, the second in a restaurant that stands as one of Chaplin's greatest short features. The painstaking and often expensive process of refining gags and inventing stories is typical of the way he worked. He was always on the set before anyone else and he was always the last person to leave. And when he left, he'd go to the cutting room and when he left the cutting room, he'd go home and, and uh, write the music. No, I don't think he ever slept. The Immigrant also contains a famous or infamous scene that years later, J. Edgar Hoover would cite as proof of Chaplin's so-called communist sympathies. As the immigrant ship arrives in New York Harbor, the land of liberty quickly becomes a bit confining. As political humor goes, it's really no more than a throwaway gag. But it does offer a peek at where some of Chaplin's later work and his later life would take him. What happened after the First World War was that Charlie and others realized the potential of the cinema uh, and what the cinema was capable of in terms of not only pure entertainment, but indeed of making some statement, statement of attitudes towards emotional problems, philosophical problems, political problems, and so on. This was a different kind of comedy. Uh, people wrote about him seriously, so you, uh, some of the first really serious film criticism was written about Chaplin. This was the moment when the cinema came to its maturity. Unlike any other comedian of the silent era, or any era since, Chaplin never employed a single screenwriter or gag man to help him create his comedy. He was and remains a singular genius whose effect on comedy, on film, and on the hearts of his fans, who number most likely in the billions, remains unchallenged. Humor, he wrote, heightens our sense of survival and preserves our sanity. The world is surely a saner place for the flickering images of Charlie Chaplin.